All right, so um, I'm going to be doing a very kind of small weekend project here because I'm you know interested in doing it and uh, I'll record this in parts. It's mostly going to be kind of like a live stream except recorded. Um, so generally speaking, what's going to happen is effectively just sort of I'm just working on stuff. Maybe I'm vocalizing a, a few of the things I'm doing and so on. It's not going to be some kind of tutorial or whatever. We have a stated problem. We want to solve that problem uh, and so on. So with that said, um, it has become clear to me uh, lately that my way of generating my Vim colors has broken somehow. And I genuinely, genuinely do not know how. And uh, I use a, a Ruby gem called Palette to generate uh, Vim colors. And this is useful because, let's, let's look at sort of the, the value prop here. The value proposition of uh, Palette is that we can define Vim colors like this. So we have these quote unquote normal scopes, right? Uh, groups, these are called highlight groups. And we, we can say, for example, normal, meaning text, uh, comment, uh, statement, etc. And then we can have what are known as links and so on. So we can say this group is really going to be, have the values of that other group, for example. So you can, in some, in some ways, you get some kind of inheritance of these groups, values, and so on. And when we actually generate this, what we actually get out of it is something like this. Um, this has been edited manually right now because uh, again, the other way broke and I had to add some things. Uh, these are all tree sitter scopes. And um, this also does not support uh, basically writing these tree sitter like things. And obviously, like I said, I have no idea why this has started failing. Um, I don't remember making any changes to, to this. So basically, we're going to have to abandon the Ruby gem. Uh, is the idea. So the idea now is for me to simply write this instead. Uh, so what I have set up here is a project. Let's rename this to BVCSS. Uh, visual, uh, better, vi better Vim color schemes syntax. Um, the idea is simply take some of what we had there and just say, you know, we maybe don't need some of it. Surely, um, some of it is simply pointless. Uh, so we're going to keep these uh, scope names here and so on. We're going to simplify uh, the keyword section of, of the previous file. So if we look at this, right, we had this author notes, etc. We're just going to say that there's a bunch of attributes that you can set. So something equals something. Uh, if, it's low, if it starts with lowercase and has an equals, that's an attribute basically. And some of these we might actually remove completely. I don't know why the name needs to be there. Um, so if we look at this actually, uh, let's see here. Let colors name, Gons Aurora. Let's see where this actually shows up. I mean, it doesn't actually show up anywhere. I'm fairly certain that this is done based on file name. So I'll be honest not clear to me where this is even coming in. Maybe we don't need that, right? Uh, let's just remove stuff that we don't need. Background dark has an actual purpose. Um, if has GUI running, set background dark, right? And so on. And uh, clearing means basically when this highlight file is actually run, should we clear all of the highlight groups and so on? And yeah, reset true is that, right? Uh, we should probably say clear here. Um, that's probably a, a thing we should be doing as well. Clear. And we don't need, we don't need these to be honest, right? We don't need to put our name and, and stuff everywhere. So the idea here is we, we can simplify uh, a lot of the stuff. We can certainly, you know, fix some of it. We could here also look to possibly do uh, you know, link here could require these, for example. Why not? Certainly is going to simplify stuff, right? We can actually look for a parenthesis and that's how we determine uh, basically a function call, right? Because that's kind of what's going on here. 
But we could also do something like, you know, if something starts with, we could also do a syntax like this, right? Um, group name here, right? And then just say parent name. That could also be something, right? Not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, we're probably going to remove... Th these are just tests, to be completely honest. We don't really need... Um, we don't really need uh, all of these, actually. They're just tests. Uh, these are, happen to be the, the contents of my, my file, right? So, anyway, um, we're going to be trying to take this and make Vim color scheme files out of it. It's a small project. It's not particularly advanced. It's not particularly uh, hairy of a, of a problem. We're doing some parsing. Uh, we establish some structure. We then write something out based on that structure. Um, a very, very easy kind of uh, compiler kind of uh, workflow, right? And this is a batch program. It won't have any interesting, you know, interface ideas behind it. Uh, we're simply trying to replace this Ruby gem. And we're also going to be, uh, unless some kind of option is given or something, maybe, uh, we're going to be just writing out to standard out. And so the way you will use this program is basically program uh, syntax file bvcss out to some file dot vim, right? So that's basically the actual usage, usage of this. So with all of that said, let's jump into just some basic kind of uh, work on this, right? So we have our test data. We have our uh, package here. I've already set up a, a parser file which, with nothing in it. Uh, I've also set up a tokenizer. And uh, for those who have seen some of my other, other projects, this is the same tokenizer I've used for my HTTP um, stuff and so on. So. It shouldn't have anything specific, obviously, to HTTP in there uh, because that would be pointless uh, and an oversight. But um, yeah, so we should be able to import to the tokenizer here, uh, which we should be able to do here, tokenization like this. Uh, now we have that tokenization namespace. Um, and now we should be able to be, you know, to start talking about, you know, what is it we actually want to do, right? And what is, what is the data that we're actually uh, looking at, you know? Uh, first of all, let's just come up with a name, right? So what is this thing, uh, syntax file or color scheme like this is a struct. A color scheme is defined as uh, having uh, clear, which is bool. Uh, let's see here. Background. Uh, let's say background base. Background setting. Let's, just, let's call it background. Why not? What is a background? <clears throat> it's a union. Uh, of uh, dark and light. That's those are the ones I know about. And, and dark is just a struct, an empty struct. Uh, we could make this an enum here. To be fair, let's make it an enum. Um, and here I think we should be able to just use an a byte. like this. Sure, we're not using tokenization, that's fine. And so we have a background, we have our clear, uh, which is a bool. And here, of course, we could have made background basically a bool as well and interpreted one of them as dark and one of them as light. But I, I think we're probably better off just saying, you know, uh, probably better off saying that this is uh, an enum. Uh, sorry about that. So 
here we want to also have a bunch of these rules right highlight groups let's call it groups maybe groups yeah I'm not sure about this we're gonna just go with uh, group here and then we have links I think that should suffice basically this could be a map here we could basically have a map so let's um let's consider this for just a moment right what is this so Actually, there's an interesting thing we could do here. I'm going to I'm going to show what I mean here. So we have a group name here. Right? A group name and to a group color, let's say. Now, what is a group color? It's a union, actually. You might be wondering, like, no, no, hang on, why? Uh, root, root color, root color pair, or group name. And a group name is a distinct string. Bear with me here. What is a root color pair? It's a struct with foreground. Yeah. Uh, tokenization color mean, means nothing here. Uh, color, color string. Hex color, let's call it. And like this. And a hex color is a distinct string again, yeah. Right, so. Yeah. I think this is going to work. And what I'm thinking here is when we search for a group name, if the result we find is a group name, that's a link. It points to another group name. So we have to then look for that group name, right? Um, this means we only have to have groups here. We have no links at all in the actual color scheme definition, right? So when a link is red <clears throat> here, right? A link is red. Um, basically, what's going to happen is that we will effectively just be um, storing the name of another group. This is a group name, of course. So for example, let's say I said uh, variable, and I want to say just this, actually. I think this will actually work. This means we don't even have to have links. Like this should be uh, understandable as a, a group name, first of all. That is something we have to consider, like, at signs need to also be able to start uh, groups. So we either have Pascal case identifiers um, or we have, yeah. Yeah, actually, okay. This is gonna, this is gonna work, I think. Here we might consider just saying colon actually, like this. <clears throat> Yeah, um, no, let's do equals. It doesn't matter. Uh, these are small, small things. Um, let's skip the colons. I think the colons are not going to help us on the, unless we need some way to just say, okay, I want to be able to kind of escape something or whatever, because you might want this kind of syntax, for example. Um, but I think we can skip the colons for now. And we can really just say, 
So hang on, uh, variable, here's actually, actually a real use case. Um, and field here. Yeah, yeah, no, let's, let's do this. Okay, I think we are actually kind of good here. I think this was a good choice as well. We should be able to just say, uh, ale warning underlined, All right? Now we have maximized our syntax here for this. Ale error underlined. This is how it should be. I actually believe this this is how we want it for sure. And this also means elixir keyword here needs to basically just be like this. We don't need to keep all of these, of course. Most of these, by the way, like, like I said, they're not relevant anymore. Um, we should be focusing on tree sitter uh, groups like this. So, okay. That's what we want here. So we have these groups and we have, I think we have figured out a way to to just have groups here, which means we can basically say group color can be a group name or a root color pair, right? And if it's a root color pair, we actually have entries, right? Um, otherwise it can be a group name, which means we have to basically look again here. And I think that should work fine. Let's put this up here. Certain types I, I like having at the top of files and so on. Um, because it really, you know, they're, they're just sort of, they're generally speaking going to be fund fundamental types that you want to have kind of straightforwardly in the, in the beginning. Right. Um, so I think the absolute first video here is probably just going to be effectively, uh, laying out this, and then we're going to see. Basically, I'm going to cut this video very, kind of, it's going to be very short. Uh, the reason being mostly we have something set here that we can start working on and, and implementing and so on. We're going to do this piece by piece, right? Um, and so on, so we can actually start working on that. So I think this is a good cutoff at this point to just say, okay, let's, um, we have some sense of what we want to construct. And we're going to see in the in the process now moving forward, how do we actually parse and construct that thing? And how does it change based on what we're seeing in the actual parsing process uh, and so on? So with that, um, ciao for now. I'll see you in the next video.